We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak. It is a pleasure to be back, back in the studio with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we have a great show lined up for you today. If you're thinking about retirement, if retirement is getting close or maybe you're newly retired, investing is probably on your mind. And we have a great show about the do's and don'ts of investing as you get closer to retirement or once you reach retirement. And we're going to walk you through that. You want to stay tuned. Plus, we'll be telling you about the foundation's courses. These are taught throughout the year. These are master's level courses taught at major Michigan universities and and the University of Missouri, newly added. We are expanding. We want you to get this education. We want you to be in the know. So stay tuned to how you can get a front row seat. Kirk and Paul, it's great to be back here with you. I want to talk about investing in retirement. This is no longer the status quo. We all know that we've got to add to our nest egg as we're in our working years, but something happens. There's a shift that takes place. Tell us about this. Well, I, you know, I think a lot of people are talking about this now. So I'm relatively confident investors, those people who are within 10 years of retirement or in retirement, have heard this before. Whether it's sinking in yet or whether they believe this concept or not, I'm not sure. But behind this change to how you invest in, in your relationship with money, there are some real strategies that you really need to focus on that's going to drive your success in retirement that has been very different than what's driven your success to accumulating your wealth, right? And so what I'm talking about is the two different phases in relationships with money. When you're working, you're accumulating wealth, you are serving money. Your goal is to save money, to raise your family, to put your children through school, to save enough for retirement. So your goal, your, 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 your objective mission. with your money, mission, thank you, is to serve it so you can grow it. And then you enter this phase where you're within five to 10 years of retirement and you start to come up to the top of the hill and we're going to enter a whole new phase. And that phase is the distribution phase where we're going to start spending the money. And what drives performance, success in that distribution phase is very different than that accumulation serving money. First, we we have to evolve to let money serve us. The money is there to serve you now. So the strategies, the objectives, how you invest, how you take income, when you spend your money, all needs to be adjusted for this new phase of retirement. And frankly, Paul, the financial service industry talks about it, but no one's really teaching people how to plan for it and convincing people to make this shift. And I know a lot of retirees got hurt last year, and I'm afraid it's going to cause irreparable harm if they don't adjust and recognize what's really going to drive the success in retirement. Yeah, you know, Kirk, I, I love the show and I love it because you're, I'm not as confident as you are. And, and I, while I think people intellectually understand this, I still think people are not acting consistent with this. I, I think people are continuing to make mistakes. I think of all the people we meet in our classes and I can, I know you, I continue to hear people doing things that they should not be doing because they were successful when they were younger. And I think this is a, a really important show for people. Paul, you know, it's funny. We have a perfect storm, right? We had the greatest 10-year, 10, 12 decade in the stock market history, right? And it was perfect timing for all of our listeners who you who are approaching within 10 years of retirement, right? When your investments were hitting full stride of compound interest, we had the greatest 10-year in history of the stock market. Now everyone's so confident that they're great investors and they know what they're doing and they're not prepared for what really is about to hit them in retirement and what's going to drive success. So we're going to encourage everyone to sign up. We teach these courses. We're a charitable organization. We've been teaching these courses at all the major universities around Michigan, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland. Now we're teaching at the University of Missouri. This is an eight-hour course. And all you have to do to attend this master's level course is Make a $29 donation to charity and register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, I, I, think, I think part of the problem, and we're going to get into this in more detail, I think part of the problem is when people are successful 
in either one aspect of their life or successful in a part of their life, they believe they can generalize that to all aspects of their life, right? So we meet really smart people, right? The people that come to this class, it's in a university setting, these are, we often meet really smart, educated, successful people who feel good about themselves, who've succeeded in everything they've done, and for some reason have this thought that they can take their successes in their professions or their successes when they were younger in the market, and that somehow translates to being able to do it in retirement. And, and I think, you know, we say this all the time, you know, there are no do-overs, right? You get one bite of this apple and you cannot take the wrong bite, right? You got to get this right. And I think we're going to get into a lot of the do's and don'ts of, retire, of investing in retirement. And I hope people stick around and listen to this. Paul, we're going to talk about, you know, sequence of returns risk. We're going to talk about income planning, right? That's what's going to drive performance. It's not what you invest in. It's, it's, it's actually when you're going to take your income from your different investments. And what's different, Paul, and we're going to talk a lot about this today, is that it's, it's having different types of investment accounts and assets, some insurance maybe, some accounts, some treasuries, some non-growth accounts. Because the reality is we're going to have major market events, major market events on average throughout someone's retirement, maybe four to seven times. So it's those moments of major market events that's going to drive your success. And you just have to know that you're not going to market time or stock pick your way or manage your portfolio around these events. It's actually going to be income planning. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. But at the core of this radio show, and what we've, we've been doing this on this, on this network for radio show for a, quite a long time now, is that we are trying to promote and convince our listeners, the listeners of this area, to attend an eight-hour master's level course that are held at universities, right? These are taught in two evenings, four hours each evening, or a full Saturday. This is an advanced course. It moves fast. It's a 200-page textbook about how to create a retirement income plan, tax efficient, mitigating all the risks that people are confronted with every day. And to register for this class, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can even stream this from your home. And we'll return. There's more with Kirk and Paul right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you've joined us today. Great discussion today on investing in retirement. And yes, there's a difference between that and the investment strategy you had leading up to retirement. I'm here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're breaking that down for you so you can avoid some of those very costly mistakes at this juncture in your life. We want you to have a great retirement. And that means staying educated, being up to date on what is going on right now in this climate. And to do that, the Education Foundation is sponsoring master's level courses on retirement. These happen all year round at major Michigan universities, and we want you there. We want you to attend. These are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. And we've recently included the University of Missouri. There We are expanding. We want as many people as possible to be in the know about retirement and how to plan accordingly. Here's how to register. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. 8981. Keep in mind also, these are streamed live. These courses are streamed so you can listen, you can view it in the comfort of your own home if you so choose. So get registered today. We'd love to see you there. We're going to get back to our program today on investing in retirement. And speaking of this program, you are welcome to find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. You can simply go there, search for Retirement Education Hour, download this episode and many others and share with a friend. Kirk, Paul, want to get back to the topic at hand today. 
the do's and don'ts of investing in retirement, and this is different than the investing strategy we had in our working years. What are some of the biggest mistakes people are making when they're investing in retirement, Kirk and Paul? Well, I'll give you the number one mistake. The number one mistake is thinking, and, and, and see, here's the problem. When we say this on the radio show, many of you won't believe what I'm telling you because it's everything you know and everything you believe that drives success with your investing. So it is the opposite. Once you, with, when, once you retire and you start pulling money out to live on, income, when you have to create your own paycheck out of your own savings, it will not be what you invest in that drives performance. It's not what you invest in. And that's the problem. You're going to use the same type of strategies, the same type of, everything is going to be the same and you're not going to recognize you have to utilize some different buckets, different strategies for your income planning. So the, the average rate of return of your portfolio over your 20, 30 year retirement, just because it's high, that doesn't mean that's going to drive the performance. In fact, I'll show you many examples in the class. We show many examples where we have really great, terrific average growth rates over a 30 year retirement where people actually run out of money in 15, 17 years. It's not the per, it's not the investments that's going to drive the performance. It's going to be where I take my income from during the different times of market volatility throughout my retirement that is going to drive my performance. And to do that, I have to have different types of accounts set up and available to pivot to to mitigate the, 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 that volatility, that what's called sequence of returns risk. And then, of course, we'll get into it later in the show, but, Paul, then there's the tax piece that everyone talks about, but we're going to break down. If you do it right, you should be able to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes by making sure you're taking the right income at the right times, filling brackets, not bumping brackets, knowing what sequence you should be taking your income from. That's what's driving performance in retirement. And then the psychology behind it, Paul, is you, right? It's, it's, I'll let you talk about the psychology because it's your relationship with money is going to change. And, and you know people behave very differently when they're retired and all they have is their own money to, to, to create that paycheck. You know, Kirk, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm listening to him thinking, in, in some ways, everything that you just said is somewhat counterintuitive, I think, to the average, quote, investor, right? You know, people, we're, all of our lives, all we hear about is we're investing money in the stock market for one purpose. We want to hit a home run, we, right? We want to, we want to, it's all about growth. It's all about growth. As long as we pick the right stocks, invest in the right assets and our money's growing, we're going to do great. That's what matters. And you're saying something very different. What you're saying is it actually is not the, the rate of return that's going to determine how well you do. It's really how you take money out of the accounts. The, you know, the different accounts you take it on and the order you take them on, that will ultimately determine how well you do. And I think that's, I think people struggle with that because it's counterintuitive to everybody's experiences. And so I'm mean, at some point, I think we should give a couple examples because I think people, it's hard for people to grasp this, but we see this all the time. We see this all the time. Paul, you said it a lot better and more clearly than I did. The, the, the challenge is they're not hearing the message we're giving right now from the rest of the financial service industry because, because it requires really advanced planning that takes a lot of time to be able to build out that effective retirement plan to drive performance. It is a whole lot easier to come up with a general rule like a 60-40 or a 70-30 portfolio and just take your 4% withdrawals and here's your probability of success reports, your e-money, your money guy pro, and there's your retirement plan. And, and, and then the, in the financial service industry says, we just can build the portfolios better than everybody else. So their value proposition is they can invest your money better than you can or anybody else can. And that's garbage. We're all using the same stuff. It's, it's garbage. There's no secret sauce. There's no way to stock pick or market time your way through success and retirement. That's not what's going to drive it. That's why they created these very, very low artificial three and 4% withdrawal rates. So they don't have to do planning in our class that we teach at the universities. We teach how you can take out 6%, 7%, 
8%, even 9% withdrawal rates. So you're in your mid-60s. You can take 7 8 9% a year. You got $2 million, You can create $160,000 with a zero chance of outliving your income. A zero probability of failure. If someone just would take the 50, 60 hours to build the plan for you or have the skill set to build the plan, the reality is most advisors don't, and that isn't their value proposition. Their value proposition is sell as quick as they can instead of planning. That's the situation you're all confronted with. So when you hear us tell you this, it's hard to understand. So that's why you have to attend an eight-hour course at all the major universities if you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity or just go check out the website at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the foundation's courses on retirement planning held at major Michigan universities. These are like master's level courses on retirement planning, and we want to see you there. We want to see you in the front row. Here's how you can reserve your spot. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirement planning edu.org. You can also call to get yourself registered 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And these courses, they are taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, both campuses at Michigan State University, both Novi and Troy, and Oakland University. And just recently, we've added the University of Missouri. So go to the website now, get registered, make sure you reserve your spot because, well, they fill up fast. So go to retirementplanningedu.org to get registered. And we're going to get back to our program today. Speaking of this program, you can download it wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. It'll pop up. You can download this episode, re-listen, share with a friend, or find many other topics in our library of podcasts. As we talk today about investments and some of the mistakes that people make once they're in retirement and investing changes. I want to talk to you, Kirk and Paul, about some of the mistakes we're making around risk, how much risk to have, maybe not enough risk. What do we need to be thinking about once we're in retirement? Well, actually, Megan, it starts a little bit before retirement. I think this is where some people make mistakes. As you, you know, we are coming closer to the retirement age and everyone sort of has an ish number where they're going to retire when it's kind of a feeling they ask their advisor they ask their broker and they say ah you should be okay and the comment of saying you should be okay never makes anyone feel really warm and fuzzy so they keep working and remember your advisors the brokers the financial service industry wants you to keep working the longer you work the more money you are saving, the more money they get to manage. The less you spend, the more they make because they're managing more of your money. So you, you, the warm and fuzzy. So it lingers for a while, right? So it really needs to start far before retirement to determine your risk tolerances and stop following the defaults that the financial service industry created for you. You are not an average baby boomer. Most of you listening to our shows, most of you coming to our class, has have a lot more money saved for retirement than the average baby boomer. Remember, the average baby boomer has about two two $250,000 saved for retirement. So if you're someone with $700, a million, $3 million, $7 million, $10 million, $20 million, you've not average and you got a lot more in the risk profile, your risk shouldn't be based upon any general rules as I get closer to my 60s or my 70s or my 50s. Forget that. Here's the rule, Paul. The rule comes down to what do I need? to give me what I want. How much money do I need to retire with to give me the income I want in retirement? That, that's what it comes down to now. You may not know the answer to that. That's why you need to come to the class. Let's start with this. If you are 65 years old, you can take withdrawal rates comfortably if you 
have the right type of planning of six, seven, eight, nine percent per year. In your, if you're 60, you're looking at uh, sit, if they're married, filing joint, maybe six, seven percent. You might squeeze eight in, you know, 62, 63 years. The point is, how close are you to giving you what you want? And Warren Buffett said it, Paul. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need to give you what you want, what are you doing? So your risk needs to be driven by what do I need to give me what I want? And that is a massive disconnect right now for most people listening to this show. Yeah, you know, I, I, it, it's interesting. I, and I, I think most people, even, even when we're talking about risk, we're sort of talking about as, as if it's static. You, you know, this is, quote, your risk tolerance. As if you only have one risk tolerance. The reality is, is that how much risk you should take depends on when you take money. You, you could theoretically, Kirk, right, have one account and within that account allocate it differently depend, depending on when you take money out. So it's not something static where you just, you know, you're conservative or you're moderate, you're moderately aggressive. Everything depends on when you're t- taking those distributions and you could have different risk profiles even within one account depending on when you're taking money out. That requires planning and, and I, I, you know, that's not what our industry promotes. Well, Paul, that's a that's a whole you you're bringing up another massive disconnect. Like the default for the financial service industry is you got a pile of money and you put it in a portfolio, and that's your exactly. retirement plan, and you just withdraw from it. No, 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 no. You need to have different buckets of money. Some that are very aggressive that I'm not I'm not going to touch if the market goes down. But if the market's up, maybe I'll pull from the aggressive bucket, right? But when the market's down, I have to have a bucket of money that doesn't has no exposure to market risk so i don't and we'll maybe we'll talk about sequence of returns risk next segment because that's the number one risk to people's retirement and that's why you have to have different buckets of money you have to have your money that you know you have to have in the next three to five years you, you that that if we have a major market event or recession you, you, it doesn't force you to change your spending patterns just because we have a market event. One thing I can I can proudly say when people come to our class and if they really connect the dots and build a retirement plan, Paul, their spending patterns will not change. It does not matter what the market conditions are. We can have a recession. We can have a pandemic. We can lose a, a whole decade, a whole decade where the market does nothing and people if you've done this properly, won't have to change your spending patterns. But you ha- that requires a lot more advanced planning. Paul, I'd like to come back to this risk top tolerance one more segment and, and also talk about sequence of returns together with that because I think it'll help connect the dots. But I'm... T- I, I, you know, we're not professional radio people, so it's hard. We, you can hear our passion, I hope. You, you, you got... If you got... 700 to 10 million dollars, 20 million dollars. You've got to attend one of these 8-hour courses. We're telling you, it's an it's like an advanced, it's like a master's level course taught at all the major universities and you can even stream it from your own home. So if you'd like to attend, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's plenty more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Get registered for one of the Retirement Foundation's eight-hour courses today by calling 800-240-8981 or visit retirementplanningedu.org. We're glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour today. I'm Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we're talking today about investments, what to do, how to invest, the strategy you need to use once you're retired. It does shift. There are changes. There are things to be aware of. And Kirk and Paul are outlining that here on the program today. Reminder, if you want to listen to this program again, if you'd like to share it with a friend or listen to any of our previous episodes, you're welcome to find this and many more anywhere you download your favorite podcasts. You can search for Retirement Education Hour and be sure to listen there. So as we're talking today about 
this investment situation, investment risk, and how to address it when you're in retirement. This is just one of the many topics that come up in the foundation's courses on retirement planning. There's so much to learn about how to plan for a successful retirement here in the 21st century. The good news is the Retirement Education Foundation, they make it very easy for you to get registered so that you can be there to learn as much as you possibly can about this next stage of life. And these courses, they're taught at major Michigan universities. They're like a master's level course in retirement planning. And these locations include the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, City, both the Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, and recently added the University of Missouri. So you can register right now. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call to register at 800 240 8981. Kirk and Paul, back to this important topic about investing in retirement. How do we avoid setting ourselves up for failure? Kirk, when we know there will be these major market events, you know, present day, down the line throughout our retirement. So, you know, Megan, one of the things we try to do in the class is try to help people look at and think about risk as, you know, once you're within that 10, five to 10 years of retirement through retirement, we just, we have to look at this a little bit different because, and I, I can appreciate that many of our listeners who haven't retired yet that are approaching retirement, probably can't understand exactly what we mean, but you have to trust us when we tell you your relationship with money is going to change. You are never going to be more vulnerable than once you retire and someone else isn't sending you a paycheck every two two to four weeks. And you have to pay yourself every month. When you have to take your own money and pay yourself every month, that's when people are a little more emotional, a lot more emotional. In fact, we know that during 2008, 60% of baby boomers panicked. We know that 35% of all baby boomers over the age of 65 panicked during COVID at March at the bottom. They panicked. 35% of baby boomers. So I know you think you're disciplined investors. I know you think you're logical. You're engineers, your CFOs, your CPAs, your attorneys, you're highly educated. You're not going to be emotional. You're not going to panic. But guess what? You're going to. We The data tells us you will. Doesn't matter how sophisticated or educated or knowledgeable about finances. Cognitively, things are going to change. And you don't have a paycheck coming from someone else. So your relationship with money is going to evolve. So we try to teach people to stop looking at and stop letting the financial service industry label you as a conservative, moderate conservative, moderate, moderate aggressive or aggressive investor. Stop with those labels. What you want to know and anyone competent should be able to tell you what is the maximum drawdown? What's the maximum loss my portfolio can experience from peak to valley? What's the maximum loss? I can experience if we had another three standard deviation event or like another 2008 event. And whatever that number is, you need to be aware of it because what our recommendation and what we teach in the class is set yourself up for success by determining how much you could tolerate losing before you would change a behavior, before you would cancel a vacation, not do a home improvement project, or maybe... You, you were scheduled to retire this year, your portfolio lost 25% or 30%. Now you're not going to retire like many people, that, that happened to many people last year. So set yourself up for success by not allowing yourself to have a portfolio that can experience a greater loss than you can emotionally tolerate that would change your behavior. Paul, can you help me with this? Elaborate on this? No, no. I, I, yeah, no, you're, you're, you hit it. You're right on. I mean, I think, I think you said something earlier, I think it really set it up. It's important people understand is that, you know, the one variable you have to take into consideration, right, is the challenge of not getting a paycheck. And I, and honestly, it, we, we could talk about it. We can lecture about it. But actually, until you're in that stage, you won't fully appreciate it. But trust us, because we meet people all the time who have retired, the psychological challenge of not getting a paycheck, right? You've been getting a paycheck your whole life. You've been working 30, 40 years and someone else is paying you. you. You can't fully appreciate the shift that has to take place when you don't get a paycheck and you're paying, paying yourself and that, how that impacts 
how you will relate to money, how you will relate to your investments, how you will spend money. And as Kirk said, the default is, especially if you're not planned, you're going to spend less than you can afford and your spending habits are going to mimic the stock market, right? The market goes down, you're going to spend less. Market goes up, you're going to spend more. That is not, I'm assuming, what people want. So, so we talk about risk and, and drawdown. All of that is impacted by the psychological challenge of not getting a paycheck, Kirk. And, and you said that earlier, and I, I don't know that people fully appreciate what that's like and how they will react, but we've seen it. We see it every day. And people need to be prepared. And it, it really, and we're going to talk about it, it, it goes back to don't wait till, till you get there. Plan before you get to retirement if you can, if it's possible, so you set this up before it happens. Paul, I, I can tell you we know it happens, and the reason why it happens, and we're talking to you, you right now, listener, the one that has $1 to $20 million that is sophisticated, engineer, do-it-yourselfers, the CFOs, the CPAs, the attorneys, the doctors. I know how smart you guys are. We know you're good with money and finance. Many of you are. But you got to understand, you are fighting uh, anxiety, fear, but you're also fighting the message the financial service industry is giving you. They're telling you during times of market volatility in retirement, spend less. That's crazy. They're telling you to spend less because they, because when your portfolios go down, their income goes down. The more you spend, the less they make. To be able to not spend less during times of market volatility requires a lot of planning, which they don't want to do. They can't do. That's what we're going to teach you in this eight-hour master level course at most of these major universities. We're also streaming it from your home. That's so, so there's no excuse. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register or even check out the courses, go to retirement planning edu.org that's retirement planning edu.org and we're back with much more right here with kirk and paul on the retirement education hour and we're back glad to have you with us for the retirement education hour megan mozak here with kirk cassidy and dr paul mettler great conversation about investing in retirement and why it's different the things you need to know to avoid costly mistakes we're breaking that down for you here on the program also telling you about the retirement education foundation's courses on retirement planning and folks these are really like master's level courses on retirement planning we want you to be there we want you in attendance at major michigan universities here throughout our community including the university of michigan eastern michigan university michigan state university both campuses troy and novi oakland university and most recently added the University of Missouri. So here's how to register. If you want to be there, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get yourself registered at 800-240-8981. Find a location and a date that works best for you and reserve your spot. They do fill up quickly, 800 240 8981. We're going to get back to our program. And if you want to re listen to this program, share it with a friend, listen to past episodes, you're welcome to find them wherever you find your favorite podcasts. That's right. Just search for Retirement Education Hour and you can download them there. Okay, investing in retirement. There are some mistakes, some missteps that people make when it comes to investing in retirement, Kirk and Paul, but you say there is one that stands apart from them all. It is the big one, the big daddy. What is it? Number one, numero uno, the biggest mistake and risk to retirement plans is something called sequence of returns risk. Now, if you've never heard of this, you need to come to the class for sure. And you need to start doing some research on sequence of returns risk. You can go right to our website, retirementplanningedu.org. We have a white paper. We've done, I think we've done a webinar on this. We have an interactive calculator to show you examples of what sequence of returns risk means. It also shows you examples where, just like we talked about earlier in the show, your average rate of return is not going to drive performance in retirement. That, I don't care what that number is. That's, it can be high, it can be low. It doesn't mean it's going to be good. It doesn't mean it's going to be bad. The key to driving success and not outliving your money in retirement is going to be 
making sure that we are never taking money out of investments when those investments are at a loss, when they're down. We have to have different buckets of money for different time frames during different market events. So the key, I'll say it again, is making sure we're taking money, our income to live on from the right accounts during different market events, during different market volatility. And the thing that people fail to realize, because they'll often say, I'll just spend less during recessions or if we have a market event, I'll, I'll back down. No, you can't do that because you're going to be forced to take your required minimum distributions. Second of all, that is insane to allow a short-term market event to dictate your spending patterns. That may be what the financial service industry wants you to do, but freedom says, I don't change my spending. It doesn't matter what happens in the stock market. I'm going to continue spending the same amount whether the market is up or down. And you can do that if you manage sequence of returns risk, never withdrawing from accounts that are down when the market's down. Last year was the greatest example of this we've had in, well, well, we, we had it during COVID, but that was, I think, enough people, they weren't spending because you couldn't do anything. But last year, a lot of people retired the, prior, the, the, the last cu prior couple of year, years, and they're going to they're gonna wake up seven, 10 years down the road and realize the impact of that pulling income out when the market was down. You can't do it. You got to have a different account to pivot to. You know, I think Kirk, one of the one of the solutions that I hear, I hear from people I meet in the class, I uh, hear you know the noise out there, is that the solution that most advisors have to this sequence risk is just have cash, right? No, so, so I, I, I you we've met people who have literally five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars in cash over many years just in case. It is a ridiculous solution. It's a ridiculous solution, but but you know that's often what people think. Well, I'll just keep cash. Cash is not the solution. To this you need as you as you as you said. You need accounts specific to when you're taking money out. If you can take money out soon, right? Those funds better not have a lot of volatility, right? If you're not touching money later, well, you could have a little more volatility. This is why, in fact, the idea of a singular risk tolerance makes no sense at all, right? Because your risk tolerance will change depending on when you're taking money out. 100% Paul. I, and I think you bring up the cash thing is a really interesting point because that is the, I'm not going to spend 50, 60 hours mapping out a retirement plan for you. I'm just going to give you a probability of success, tell you to take, Vanguard is going to tell you to only withdraw 2.8%. So if you have a million bucks, they'll say you can have $28,000 a year. Morningstar will tell you 3.7 or 3.8%. Schwab is saying 3.7, 3.8%. Fidelity's telling you 3.6, 3.7%. That's and then keep a bunch of cash. That's crazy. Do you understand? If you have simple math, three, four hundred thousand dollars in cash means you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to reduce your spending by about ten thousand dollars every year throughout retirement. That's $10,000 less income you can have. See, our biggest fear for most of, of you, those of you who have seven hundred to $10 million, $20 million, where our fear isn't you're going to outlive your money. Our fear is you're going to wait, underspend what you otherwise could have spent if you just understood how to build a real retirement plan, not what the financial service industry is trying to jam you into those cookie cutter one size fits all. That cash is... You remember, cash when you're younger for emergency accounts, I get it. It made you feel good. But think about what, what's going to change over the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years making you feel comfortable. So you're going to have your one to three to five to $700,000 in cash earning nothing for a 30-year retirement? Talk about destroying income, compound interest in income power. You're destroying it. So we throw a lot at you. We get it. We're trying to do the best we can to help you hear and learn things that you aren't hearing and learning every day so that you will come, at least go to the website and look at what a real retirement plan looks like. We do a 30-minute webinar walking you through what a real retirement plan looks like to help you mitigate these risks and maximize your income and minimize your taxes. You can come to the class. We'll teach it to you. It's an eight-hour class, two evenings or one full Saturday. 
You could stream it from your home, or we're teaching at almost every major university in the area. So if you'd like to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. And stay tuned. There's plenty more with Kirk and Paul right after this. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler for another great edition of the show. This one focused on how to have an investment strategy in retirement. You do not want to have a misstep when it comes to this. Once you reach retirement, there are a lot of things to know and Kirk and Paul, they've been touching on those throughout this show today, and we have plenty more to share with you. This is just one of the topics that are discussed at the courses that are taught by the Retirement Education Foundation at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, And most recently, we've added the University of Missouri. We want you to attend. There's so much to know, and we make it easy for you to get signed up. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to register 800-240-8981. These courses really are seen as almost like a master's level course on retirement planning. And when you think about all that's necessary to plan successfully for a 21st century retirement, you'll understand why these courses are necessary and needed. So get registered today. Also want to mention that today's show and many others are found wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. You can download this, share with a friend, listen again, just search for Retirement Education Hour. Okay, back to investing in retirement. What does this really all boil down to, Kirk? Well, it comes down to a plan. And, you know, it sounds simple. Everyone thinks they have a plan. And as Mike Tyson once said, everyone thinks they have a plan until they get hit in the mouth, right? <laughs> or hit in the face. Well, I might have screwed up the quote, but, you know, that's a, <laughs> everyone's using it. It's true. And, y- you know, when you're going to get hit in the face is when you retire and you hit your first major market event. So, It was, I don't know, 12 years ago when we started teaching these courses. The foundation concept was we wanted to, the foundation does a number of different things, financial literacy for high school students, advanced retirement planning courses around the country at different universities. The purpose of this was really for that person that has saved $700,000 to call it $20 million dollars where you need more advanced type of planning, more advanced type of strategies. And what's going to drive success in retirement for you is going to be a 30-year plan that's mapped out account by account where I'm taking my income from with pivot accounts to pivot to when we have major market events, which we're going to have four to seven major market events through most of our retirements, a 30-year retirement. In addition, how do I minimize taxes? So if we really plan properly, and it's it really takes to build a custom individualized plan for someone, it takes professionals 50 to 60 hours. That means CPAs, attorneys, CFPs, wealth managers. It is comprehensive. Now, if you do it effectively, and it's what we teach in the classes, how to do this, there are so many tax planning strategies on how and when you take income, filling brackets, not bumping brackets, recognizing gains in a 12% bracket so you don't have to pay capital gains. Because if I'm in a 12% bracket, I do not pay tax on long-term capital gains or dividends. How do I minimize my taxable portion of Social Security? You need to know 96% of you will choose the wrong strategy on when to take Social Security. It is not a simple calculator online that's going to give you the answer. It requires a 30-year plan mapping it out to know how much required minimum distributions am I going to be forced to take in my 70s and 80s so I know what income I sh- where I should be taking my income from in my 50s and 60s when I retire. So it's a tremendous amount of work. It's why the classes are eight hours in length. It's why it's master's level. These do-it-yourselfers, we get a lot of DIYers. We're just going to tell you, I I promise you, if you try to do this in retirement, you are going to way underspend what you otherwise should be spending. You're going to work longer than you need to, way underspend, and pay a lot more taxes. 
Most people who attend our class learn ways to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, retire earlier, and they learn how to take income in the in their 60s at 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates. You're never going to do that if you do this yourself. you got to come to a class to learn how to build these plans. No one's talking about this, Paul. You know, we, we talked once about actually doing a whole show on why people don't come to the class, right? Every time we do the show, we scratch our head. We hit our head against the wall, right? We're, we scream and yell, like, why people choose not to come to class. I don't know, maybe people are, I, I think mostly because, sadly, I don't mean to be disrespectful, people are arrogant. People tend to think they, you know, they, they, they can do this. They've done everything else. They can do this, right? I can fix my bathroom. You know, I can plan my retirement. It's, am- it's amazing. Well, you don't they, think you can give. They've accumulated $3 million, $4 million, $5 million of wealth. They think that's going to be the same thing as retirement. Planning, right, right. But you know what? You don't think you could do your own heart surgery. <laughs> nope. Right. For some reason, when it comes to finances, people think they can do it themselves. And and I think you said it. The best case scenario is you underspend. The worst case, you actually run out of money. Right. Yeah. This is not a DIY project you need to tackle. This is you know different than fixing a faucet. Well, let me say this, Paul. If you think you're going to do this yourself before you even attempt, you better attend the class (laughs) because you're going to recognize. I I tell you, people leave the class fully committed. They were going to do it themselves. They leave the class like, oh, my gosh, your spreadsheets, your Monte Carlo simulations, all that's garbage. You don't have the ability. This is the first time you are ever going to attempt to do this. We've done it thousands and thousands and thousands of times, and we're trying to teach you specifically individually how to do your own customized retirement planning. You got to come to one of these eight hour courses. I know it's a big commitment. Look, no, no one's selling you anything. It's a charity that's hosting the courses. It's purely education. It's straight education. So eight hours taught in two evenings, four hours each evening, or a full Saturday master's level, 200 page textbook taught at most of the major local universities. If you'd like to register or to learn more or check out what a retirement plan really looks like, watch the webinar on our website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.